Website hackings, database breaches, passwords being stolen every day. Have we reached a point where we need to figure out how to do away with passwords altogether? I talked about this in a recent video about having a strong password and using unique passwords for every site and how it's essential for keeping your account safe. But obviously that makes it almost impossible to remember every password for every site, especially if you ever have to change them. Now there are password managers that will keep track of your passwords, but should they really be necessary? I'm sure that most people think that there really has to be a better way, but what other options do we even have? It would need to be something that is at least as secure as the best passwords and be extremely easy for the average user or else it'll just be worse than it is now. For this discussion, I should probably mention that there are three different categories for what you can use to authenticate yourself in security. These categories are something you know, like a password, something you have, like a phone or a USB key, and something you are, like your fingerprint or your retina. And all of these have their own advantages and disadvantages. Now, right off the bat, you might be thinking that the most obvious answer is fingerprints, right? I mean, it's easy, you don't have to remember it, and phones already use it. But fingerprints and other biometric data have one major flaw, among others, but the major one is that you can't change it. If you use your fingerprint to access everything and then someone gets it, they can now get into all your stuff. And even worse than with passwords is it's not like you can change your fingerprint to keep them out. So while fingerprints are very convenient in some cases, they're really not a good solution to replace passwords altogether. Another option is something you have. So maybe you would carry around a USB key that's encrypted and has some algorithms in such a way that it authenticates you, but it can't be intercepted. So even if someone is listening in on your internet connection, they can't use anything they intercept later. It's a one-time thing. Now, there is actually one company called Yubico that does make these different USB keys as a method for two-factor authentication. So these do exist today in some forms, and the advantages of having a physical key is that they are very secure electronically, and you don't have to remember anything to use them. But of course, the disadvantage is that if you forget it or lose it, you're kind of screwed. Also, if someone steals it from you, then that's all they would need to access everything if that's the only method you are using. So none of these different categories, what you have, what you know, what you are, seem to be perfect in themselves. There are different advantages and disadvantages. So what can we do then? Now, I'm not pretending to be any kind of expert. I definitely am not. But I think at least for the foreseeable future, it's going to be all about two-factor authentication. I think we're going to need to use something we know at least as one factor for a while. Physical tokens are easy, but they can be stolen in a way that passwords and biometric data can't. You can't exactly sneak up behind someone and steal their password out of their brain. Yet, at least. <laughs> Memorized passwords can also be brought with you anywhere, it's just in your head, and they can't be broken or run out of batteries or copied without directly tricking the user into giving it to you, at least. I've read a lot of articles about possible alternatives for passwords. This is something that a lot of people apparently have been thinking about, and there seems to be several that all share one particular theme that seem to be pretty good, and those are methods that are a kind of hybrid between the different categories. For example, one suggestion is computer chip implants. It might sound ridiculous, I know, but think about it. Humor me for a second. It's a combination of something you have and something you are. You can't really steal an implant out of someone, unless you really tried, I guess, and you won't lose it, so you don't have to worry about the disadvantages of USB keys, for example. And unlike biometric data that normally used, like a fingerprint, an implanted computer chip could presumably be reprogrammed wirelessly, so you could change it if it was compromised, and you can't do that with a fingerprint. Another less invasive solution might be a person speaking their passwords into the computer. So again, this combines two different methods, something you know, your password, and something you are, your voice. The computer could possibly even ask you to speak a unique phrase each time, just in case someone recorded you saying your password last time, it can verify your voice alone each time. And there are current technologies like Windows Hello that claim to look at your face and identify you, but from what I've read up until now, these are pretty easily defeated, so I wouldn't really trust them. In any case, we definitely haven't had any method that can claim to be a real alternative to passwords completely. There are methods that are used in conjunction with passwords, but nothing to replace them. 
And I think that's because passwords are so easily universally implemented. No matter where you are, what computer you're using, who you are, what you have with you, you'll still be able to log in as long as you know your password. Whereas if you need a security key every time, what happens when you try to log in while on your phone or at some public computer that doesn't allow you to plug anything in? You kinda are screwed. I think the main problem with passwords though is not that they're hard to remember for each one, but rather that you need to remember all of them and they do need to all be different for each website. So it will be difficult to come up with an alternative that is both easy to remember and you can use it for everything. It's kind of like a paradox there. But you also have to not worry about anyone stealing it. So that's kind of a tall order. So now that we know that we'll probably be stuck with regular passwords for a while, what can we do right now? Well, I think the only way to make passwords more convenient is to get a password manager like LastPass or one of the others and secure the heck out of it. Use a super strong long password for that, require a physical security key to log in, the whole nine yards, so you don't have to remember all your passwords, but you will still have to make sure that no one steals your master password or else they literally have everything. So you wanna have every type of even inconvenient methods for securing your password manager. For extra security on the other hand, as opposed to convenience, the best thing you can do right now is enable two-factor authentication on as many accounts as you can. So in addition to your password, add something you have. You have a few options with this and they're really not that bad in terms of convenience, really. Many websites now allow you to use your phone, for example, where anytime you log in, you will also have a second code sent to your phone and you have to type that in as well. However, be aware because that's not always the perfect solution. Many websites seem to implement this feature poorly with the cell phones. You see a lot of times if you go to reset your password for that site, they'll just verify you by sending a code to your phone. So in that case, it basically turns it into one factor authentication. And if someone steals your phone, they don't even need your password anymore. They just reset your password with the phone and have access. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having two factor authentication if they get the wrong one. Now, we have seen some YouTube creators actually who have had people call their cell phone providers and trick them into hijacking the YouTuber's SIM card. So the hacker was able to get the YouTuber's text messages and sent to their own phone. So obviously text message verification isn't always the best because it's something that you don't necessarily have. It's something that someone could remotely access. It's not something they have to physically steal. So there are other options you wanna consider than that. And the better option here, I would say, is not to use text messages as the verification, but rather use a token generator app stored on your phone. So what I mean by this is instead of the code being sent to you via text message to your phone number, the codes are automatically generated on your phone through an algorithm, just like those keychains you see that have a rotating code on them, it's on your phone instead. And this is much better for two reasons actually. First of all, you can use it without cell reception, so there's no worry about the text message not coming through. You see, the website and the phone will basically agree on a unique algorithm for generating the codes for you over time. So they'll always be in sync. Therefore, you never need to communicate with the website except when you actually go to type in the code because they should both know what the code is supposed to be at any point in time. So that's why it's a great method because it's nothing to be intercepted. So going off that, the other benefit of a code generator app is that it's not tied to your cell phone number at all, but rather your physical cell phone itself. In fact, you don't even need to have a cell phone plan at all on the device you're using. It doesn't even have to be a phone to generate the codes. So to steal the codes, someone would have to physically go up to you and steal the device out of your hand or wherever and also know your password. And then if you have your phone encrypted and password protected, like you should obviously, they won't be able to do anything with it because they won't be able to get to those codes in the first place. I have personally always suggested an app called Authy for generating codes because it has a few advantages I like over other ones like Google Authenticator. For example, it allows you to store all your tokens for different websites and back them up encrypted. So if your phone gets lost 
or you restore your phone, normally those would be gone and you'd have to go and restore your account because you don't have access to the other factor. Now, the way they're backed up is via cell phone number. So you verify that you're on the same cell phone number as when you originally backed up, but because they're encrypted, even if someone were to steal your number and try to download them, they'd be useless without the password. So they're encrypted locally, so no one else is gonna be able to access it, even Authy themselves, so you don't have to worry about it being stolen, it's all encrypted. Do keep in mind though that not every website is gonna support code generator apps. I would at least use it on your email account if you can. I know that Gmail specifically does support these code generator apps, not just cell phone authentication. So you should definitely enable it on that because obviously if someone gets into your email account, they can use it to reset all your passwords. Now Google also has another interesting method for authentication called Google Prompt, which you can use, which is probably the easiest of them all, but of course only works with a Google account. Basically, when you go to log into your Google account, it will show you a pop-up on your phone that says, are you trying to log in? And you just press yes or no, there's no codes required. So if you're super lazy, at least please enable that. You don't have to type in codes, it's really easy because the absolute last thing you need is someone getting into your email account. So I think that's all I really wanted to get into in this video. We kind of talked about where we stand right now in terms of password options, and we also discussed where we might go in future options. Unfortunately, everything at this point is really just theoretical, but it's very clear that a lot of smart people are working on better options to keep accounts secure. It's a big deal, especially with all the hackings going on. And the best thing you could do right now is just use all the tools available to you. And that's why I kind of wanted to talk about some of them in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think down in the comment section. Maybe we can talk about whether or not you use two-factor authentication, which you should be. So don't say I didn't warn you. And also, if you remember last week, I asked you guys a question. I wanted to know, have you ever been hacked and how did that change your behavior in security? We got a lot of good responses. I'll read a couple. Theodora said, two-factor authentication saved my Google account. I got a message from Google with my two-factor authentication code when I clearly was not trying to log into Google. I rushed to my computer and changed my password to a far more secure one. Aesop Matt also said, as a teenager, I used the same password for a plethora of social media accounts that I had. My Instagram got hacked by who knows, and I ended up getting hacked on Facebook. Weird stuff was uploaded, and now my family thinks I'm a freak. Don't use the same password, folks. Amen to that. So guys, be sure to subscribe because I try to make new videos at least three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and also consider clicking that bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications because believe me, YouTube is definitely not gonna show you my videos otherwise because they have such a crappy algorithm. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some of those videos right here, including last week's video about how to use good passwords. You can click on that even if you're on a phone. And so of course, as usual guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.